Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kritika Dikshit. I'm a pediatric dentist and today I'm going to discuss with you a very important topic in pediatric dentistry that is child psychology. So let's try to understand this topic together. So to begin with child psychology, why it is so important? It is important to understand the psychology of the child before you are trying to do any dental treatment in that child because without that if you would try to uh, do any treatment in a child he is not going to cooperate with you so to understand the child and to get the cooperation from the child you need to know the child psychology now to understand the child psychology there are several theories that have put forward um, about this and uh, mainly broad classification of this th these theories have been done into the psychodynamic theories the theories of learning and the development of behavior and uh, the Margaret Marlowe's theory of development so psychodynamic theories um, these are the theories which try to understand the dynamics of the psychology like how the psychology works so that's why they call as psychodynamic theories then we have the theories of learning and development of behavior that how an individual learns anything or how the behavior is developed. So that's why they are called as the theories of learning and behavior. And then the third one, uh, Mahler's theory of development. So uh, let's see the first broad heading, which is the psychodynamic theories. So in psychodynamic theories, we have the first one that is psychosexual theory or the psychoanalytic theory. It was given by a very famous psychologist who is Sigmund Freud in 1905. So psychosexual or the psychoanalytic. Psychosexual means it is trying to uh, bring the sexuality into picture of the psychology and psychoanalytic because it is trying to analyze the psychology. So psychosexual or the psychoanalytic theory by Sigmund Freud. The second theory we have is the psychosocial theory or the model of personality development by Eric Erikson uh, in 1963. So psychosocial theory, this theory focuses mainly on the social interaction of the individual with the environment. So uh, how the psychology changes according to the society. So that is what this theory takes into consideration. That is your psychosocial theory. The third theory that we have in psychodynamic theories is the cognitive theory by Jean Piaget uh, in 1952. So cognitive means trying to understand how the mind functions. So um, these three theories, they come into psychodynamic theories. Let's see the another broad category, which are the theories of learning and development of behavior. In this category, the first theory that we have is the hierarchy of needs by Maslow in 1954, social learning theory by Bandura in 1963, classical conditioning by Ivan Pavlov in 1927, and the operant conditioning theory by Skinner in 1938. So let's see the first theory in the psychodynamic section, which is the psychoanalytic theory or the psychosexual theory. So psychoanalytic uh, or the psychosexual theory was given by Sigmund Freud in 1905. He, uh, he was a very famous psychologist. He was also nominated for the Nobel Prize, but unfortunately he could not get it because of his fellow competitor who was Albert Einstein. So um, Sigmund Freud, he, uh, he tried to understand how the mind functions. So, um, but all of his uh, theory was focused mainly on the sexuality. So according to him, there are certain erogenous zone where the sexual energy is in, uh, invested. Okay, so um, he also tried to uh, describe the human brain into two models. The first model that he uh, talked about was the topographic model and the another model is the psychic model or the psychic triad. So let's see what is your topographic model. Topographic means um, anything that is physical. So how is the structure of the mind? He tried to um, understand mind as a huge iceberg. Iceberg which is dipped inside the sea. Okay, And you can only see little bit of the iceberg onto the surface level. So here... 90% uh, of the uh, of your brain uh, 
is unconscious which is beneath the sea level and only 10% of your brain is conscious according to, to Sigmund Freud. So um, the large part of your brain is unconscious and a very little bit is conscious. Also, um, he told that the, the unconscious or the pre-conscious um, mind is um, uh, not available, okay? And it's the only conscious mind which is available to function. But unfortunately, most of the time, that is 90% of the time, uh, it is unconscious. Next thing he talked about was the psychic model or the psychic triad. So according to him, um, there, are, there are three principles on which the human mind functions. These three principles are id, ego and superego. So id, id is basic identity of an individual and it mainly works on the pleasure principle. It works on the immediate gratification. So in id you have your uh, drive for hunger, your thirst, drive for sex, any kind of pleasure, it works on the principle of immediate gratification. Okay, the next thing he discussed was ego. Ego, it works on the reality principle. It develops during the second to sixth month of life and it works on memory and judgment. So basically, it is something I wanted immediately and ego is something it is going to see the pros and cons and then it is going to make a decision. Next, he talked about superego. Superego means um, it is basically the prohibitions that an individual learns from an environment either by shame or guilt. So for example, there is a child and um, he, he tried to stole somebody's uh, chocolate or anything. So um, if after that he is given a punishment um, and shown that this is not the right thing to do. So this is a kind of prohibition that he has learned from the environment. So the next time when the same situation arises, he's not going to repeat, repeat this thing because his, his super ego is going to come into picture and tell him to uh, not repeat the same thing. So basically the three psychic triad principles are it, super, id, ego and super ego. Now he also talked about uh, ego defense mechanism. So what are those? So uh, whenever the anxiety becomes overwhelming, the ego tries to defend itself. Okay, so um, the brain works on this principle only that whenever there is ego, it must be defended. And he told that there are various mechanisms of defending this ego. According to him, uh, these defense mechanisms are displacement, projection, reaction formation, regression, repression, rationalization, denial, and identification. So let's see what is repression. Repression is an unconscious mechanism employed by the ego to keep disturbing or threatening thoughts from becoming conscious. So for example, during the Oedipus complex, aggressive thoughts about the same sex parents are repressed. So basically, if a wrong thought is coming, you are trying to, um, you are trying to make it, uh, you're trying to repress it to become conscious, okay? So you are basically trying to stand against it. That is kind of repression. Second mechanism is denial. Denial involves blocking external events from awareness. If some situation is just too much to handle, the person just refuses to accept it. So for example, smokers may refuse to admit to themselves that smoking is bad for their health. So if anybody is doing any wrong thing, they won't admit that this is wrong because their ego won't allow them to accept that thing. So that is what is called as denial of the reality. The next mechanism he talked about is projection. Projection involves individuals attributing their own unacceptable thoughts, feelings and motives to another person. For example, you might hate someone but your super ego tells you that such hatred is unacceptable. You can solve the problem by believing that they hate you. Okay, so there is a problem with some other person. 
you have some issue with another person and uh, you don't want to accept that and in, in turn you throw everything on the other person and say that they have issues with you so this is a kind of what is called as projection next mechanism he talked about is displacement displacement means satisfying an impulse for example aggression with a substitute object for example someone who is frustrated by his or her boss at work may go home and kick the dog so you are basically trying to throw your anger on someone else so this is an example of displacement the next mechanism that freud talked about is regression regression this is a movement back in the psychological time when one is faced with stress so a child for example a child may begin to suck their thumb again or wet the bed when they need to spend some time in hospital regression is like whatever your childhood mechanisms are to deal with the anxiety or the unfavorable situations or what is your coping up mechanism so um that is uh, what is called as regression you are trying to regress to the previous situations next mechanism he talked about is sublimation sublimation means satisfying an impulse for example aggression with a substitute object in a socially acceptable way for example sport is an example of putting our emotions for example aggression into something constructive so you are just trying to uh, make something constructive out of your anger or you are trying to modify your feelings to a greater thing or a constructive thing that is an example of sublimation okay now freud also tried to explain several stages um, a child goes through till he attains puberty Uh, in order to understand the psychology but his main focus was the sexuality he was also criticized for this because his main focus was sexuality but it does make some sense when we would understand it so according to freud there is first stage in the uh, child's life that he call it as oral stage this stage lasts from birth to first year of first year and in in this stage the sexual focus for a child is his mouth and uh, he indulges in chewing and sucking the key developmental task uh, in this stage is weaning whenever there is fixation that occurs in this stage it would result in obsessive eating smoking or drinking so oral stage that is the first year of a child's life everything he wants to put into the mouth freud called it because mouth is the focus of the sexuality for him that's why he want to put everything into the mouth the second stage according to freud is the anal stage this stage last for from 2 to 3 years of age the sexual focus according to freud is anus in this stage and the key developmental task is the toilet training for a child if uh, an individual is fixed in this stage there would be obsession with cleanliness uh, and there would be sexual anxiety the third stage according to freud is the phallic stage that is 4 to 5 years of age in this stage the sexual focus is on the genitals and the key developmental tasks in this stage are identifying with the general role models that is oedipus and electra complex i will explain these complexes in detail in the coming slides now if there is a fixation in the phallic stage there would be a difficulty in the individual with the intimate type of relationships okay the fourth stage according to freud is the latency stage that lasts from 6 to 12 years of age the sexual focus is none because this is a latent type of stage uh, the child does not have any kind of focus but what he is trying to do is he is trying to interact with the social environment so the key developmental task in this stage is the social interaction now if the fixation results in usually does not occur because uh, this stage does not occur um, in all the societies so um, latency is a kind of uh, something where uh, the child does not have any kind of focus he is just open for everything the last stage is the genital stage which is puberty and later on and the sexual focus is genitals 
and uh, the key developmental task in this stage is the intimate relationships productivity um, a person wants to have the productivity in the intimate relationships and if the fixation occurs in this stage previous fixation will lead to low sexual interest no pre previous fixation normal sexual motivation so freud um, he just concluded that from oral to genital stage an individual has to go from each stage successfully in order to transfer to the next stage so if the oral stage is not resolved and the child goes to anal stage then that oral stage is going to come back either in any any time during during the life of the child okay so that is what his uh, basic focus is that each stage should be should be resolved and after that the child should go to the next next stage okay the two complexes that i had mentioned um, in the earlier slide that is oedipus complex and the electra complex so oedipus complex is something uh, which is seen in boys so boys um, imitate they try to imitate their father in order to gain the mom's attention and um, basically in greek mythology oedipus is the king of the thebe and he uh, killed his father in order to win the mother's sexual love so um, this is a kind of complex which is seen in the guys and the the female counterpart of this is electra complex where the girl want to wins the father's love and uh, she has envy with the mom so um, the oedipus complex in the boys and electra complex in the girls